Thank you for joining us for our second uh, time together for Conversation and Coffee with Pastor Paul. And as we meet together today, as we just kind of think about a conversation we could have, we want to extend off where we began as we looked at praying for the laborers that the Lord calls into the harvest as we think about the work of evangelism, as we think about the practice of prayer. And the second part, I think, of evangelistic praying, if we're going to talk about that, would be not only do we pray for laborers, but we also need to pray for the harvest itself. And when I think about that, I think about the fall of the year, you know, we're entering into that now, and we could be driving down the road, and we will see fields that have farmers that are using equipment like combines and other forms of equipment to bring in a harvest. And they're doing that because they planted the seed, the seed had matured, and now it's ready to be plucked and gathered and stored and be used. And when we think about the harvest of salvation, we're thinking about the labors that we pray for that have gone and planted the seed. And now the labors are going back into the field because that seed has been gathered, it is taking root, and now it's ready to be harvested for the sake of salvation. And so when I think about that, we, we talked about Matthew 9 and 10, how Jesus said, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send out laborers and he sent them out as examples. Well, Luke also speaks to this. In Luke chapter 10, he, he opens up with these words. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and he sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself was about to go. He told them, the harvest is abundant, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest. Now, what we understand here is he, again, he's asking them to pray for those who will go and share Jesus, go and share Christ. And we need to do that. Absolutely. You know, you and I, as followers of Christ, we need to pray for one another in our evangelistic efforts. But we also need to pray for those who are lost. And I believe the Bible uh, gives us many uh, reasons and, and ways and truths about praying for the lost. And I really just want to share six, I think, truths that we can pray, uh, six ways that we can pray for the harvest itself, how we can pray for individuals that are lost. And I would say that we can do this two ways. One is we pray in general. So we pray in general, Lord, would you help those who do not know you to come to you. And that's just the general way. Uh, another way we can do it is to identify people that you and I engage with and we recognize they need Jesus. And we begin to identify them and pray by name for them that they would receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and commit their life to him. And so today I want us to look at how we can in six ways pray for specific individuals of the harvest and for the harvest. And I think first of all, we need to recognize we pray that the Lord would draw them to himself. We mean that he will draw them to themselves or to himself. It's the idea that they will hear the message, they will sense that there is something greater than they need and that, they're, that the Lord is working in their life to awaken them and to allow them to see him as redeemer and savior of the one they need. We see this in John chapter six, verse 44, we hear these words, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. Again, Jesus is saying, it's my Father in heaven. It's God Almighty who tugs on their hearts to bring them to himself so that they would hear the message of the gospel and respond to it and know him. And so this idea is we need to pray in general and specifically that those we know that are lost or those who need Jesus just in general, that the Lord would draw them in a way that they would respond. I think the second thing we can pray for, according to the Word of God, is that we need to pray that the lost would seek to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. This means that they are seeking, they are looking, they are trying to find that purpose in life that they recognize they need, and they are seeking that. As they seek that, they find it in Jesus. And so that's what we want to pray for, that when they're looking for their identity of who they are, they find that in the person of Jesus. Hear the Word of the Lord again. Acts 17, 27. This is, of course, of the Apostle Paul. It said, he did this so that they may seek God 
and perhaps they might reach out and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Again, the concept is that they, we want to pray they will seek after God Almighty, that they would look to him as who could be their Redeemer and Savior. So we want to pray initially, Lord, we want the, you to draw these individuals who are lost to you. And then in a second way, we say, Lord, we pray that they will not seek after the things of this world, but they would seek after you for redemption. And so we begin to pray that way. The third thing we pray over the harvest, over the lost individuals, is that we pray that the lost or the harvest will be, uh, that will be prevented from being blinded by Satan. You know, we live in a spiritual warfare. We live in the reality of, of the evil one trying to keep us from obeying Jesus and following him. And when someone is lost, the evil one works with everything they can to keep them blinded from the truth of who God is that they would not respond. So we need to pray with the authority and the, the certainty of uh, the victory of Christ, ultimately that they would not be blinded by the evil one. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, these words, In their case, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So notice how we pray there. We need to pray that their eyes would be opened to the reality of Christ and that the evil one is not allowed to deter them, is not allowed to blind them, to distract them, but rather they see the truth as they are seeking the truth, as Jesus draws them to himself. And so that's kind of what we need to be praying for in the first three points of praying for the harvest. The fourth way we pray for the harvest is that we need to pray that they would lay aside their idols and turn to Jesus. I think if you and I are just honest, we just recognize that idolatry is a constant battle. There are always things that is tempting us. There are always things that exist that are trying to draw our attention away from following Jesus completely. And they often want to take priority in our life above Jesus. And that's really when idolatry sets in. When someone doesn't know Jesus, we recognize they worship something. And so what they have to do is get to, to lay aside the things that are separating them from Jesus, to lay aside those idols, the things they chase after, and then they pursue Jesus. Here again, the words of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. For they themselves report what kind of reception we had from you, how you turned from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom we raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. There it is. How you lay aside the idols. We pray for that. They would lay aside the distractions, the things that are keeping them from Jesus. So if we're praying for the harvest, we're praying for the lost, we want to pray that God will draw them to himself. We want to pray that they are seeking to find their identity in Christ. We, we want to pray that the evil one will not keep them from seeing the truth. We want to pray they will lay aside the things that would keep them from Jesus. And then we want to pray uh, and that they would believe in the great name of Jesus and be saved. And it says in John chapter 1, verse 12, But to all who receive him, who gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name. Notice the key here is that we want to pray that the lost will believe in who Jesus is, believe in his name, believe in his exclusive offer of redemption that comes only through him, that we believe that he is the son of God, that we believe he paid the price on the cross, that we believe he was buried, we believe he was raised from the dead, we believe that he's ascended, and we believe that he will return. When we do this, we are coming to the place where we're saying, we want to pray that the lost will believe this in the great name of Jesus, which ultimately then leads us to say, Lord, I want to pray that the harvest, that the lost would confess Christ as Savior and grow in a relationship with Him. What we want to do is we want to pray that they would respond to the greatness of God. And when they respond to the greatness of God, they will commit themselves to following Him each and every step of the way. That means that they are focused on saying, I want to become like Jesus. I want to be one who is set apart on the process of sanctification, growing and growing and growing tells us in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, these words. The Apostle Paul wrote, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in Him, being rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, overflowing with gratitude. Again, we want to pray that they would come to the place of overflowing with gratitude because they confess Jesus as Lord and Savior and commit their lives to growing. So let me ask this question. 
How are you praying for the harvest? How are you praying for the harvest in general? That means those who just are in the world that are in need of Jesus. And how are you identifying people in your life that you can pray specifically for, that you can pray for their salvation? And so notice that when we pray for the salvation of others, we pray for the harvest, and we pray for the laborers, and then we are obedient as God leads us to be the laborers, we're saying, Lord, this is our desire, send us. And so are you praying that way? I'm going to ask you if you will just join me just for a moment. We're going to pray in general for the salvation of those who don't know Jesus, just as an example, but also just because we desire to pray for the lost. So I hope you will join me as we pray together these truths that are based in the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, I want to come to you first and ask that you will draw to yourself those who are in need of a Savior, that they would sense your leading in their life, that they will sense your presence, that they would sense their need, and they see that need being met nowhere but you. As a result, Father, I pray that those individuals who are being drawn will seek after you, that they will not look to the ways of the world, but rather they would pursue a relationship with you as the cure to their, to their disease of sin. And Father, as a result, we pray that they would not be blinded by the evil one, that they would not believe the lies of the evil one, but rather they would find hope and trust in you as they see the true um, Redeemer, as they see the light, as you guide them and direct them. Father, we pray that the lost would lay aside the things that are hindering them from coming to you, and they would seek to worship you alone and turn to you as Redeemer. And we pray that they will do it in, in no other fashion because there is no other way than the believing in Jesus as the Son of God. And so we believe they would, We believe that that would bring forth salvation. We pray that they would believe in the great name of Jesus and receive salvation. And so as a result, Father, we pray that the lost would come to that moment of confession and commitment with you. And so, Father, we pray that the harvest is continuing to be harvested, that it is abundant, and that you would send out laborers, that your kingdom may expand. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining the conversation today. It's Conversation and Coffee with Pastor Paul. And I hope that you are taking time to have a conversation with Jesus about those who are in the fields laboring, those that would need to be in the fields laboring. And I hope that you're having a conversation with Jesus about those who are lost and seeking that he would work in their lives and sending laborers that may hear the gospel and be redeemed. Can't wait till we get to sit down and have another conversation and a cup of coffee. Until then, uh, keep on seeking the Lord. We'll see you next time.